So we have a, uh, or I should say an, uh, an Atari uh, Millipede game here. And um, I had just purchased this yesterday from uh, a guy here in San Diego who owns a uh, bar uh, slash arcade. And um, I got this for a really great price. I mean, he was selling it for 275 bucks because it wasn't working. And I think I can get this to work. I have no idea what's really wrong with this. Um, but looking at it, everything seems to be okay. Um, this kind of looks like it's just like a ground wire or something here that I'm not completely sure what it used to go to. I'll have to kind of look at the schematics. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fire this guy up and we're going to see um, what kind of behavior uh, we're getting out of this. Okay, so we're hearing we're hearing tones. That's a good thing. Let me see what's going on in the front of this. I'm seeing neck glow. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. So I've got tones and I've got neck glow. Okay. So what we've got here is what's known as vertical collapse. Okay. And some people might call this horizontal collapse, but this is actually vertical collapse. And I'm going to explain this here. And well, what happens is they have these monitors. They turn them on their sides, okay? And then so the top to the middle and the bottom to the middle have collapsed, okay? So we're only getting the line down the center, okay? So the horizontal is good, but the vertical isn't, because this if think of it as a TV. If you turn it on its side, it'd be the vertical. Some people would see this and they say I have horizontal collapse, but we don't, okay? We have vertical collapse. That could be for a number of reasons but it's almost always going to be somewhere in the monitor that we're going to have to check out. So, okay, we've got sound, we've got vertical collapse, lights are on, that feels like I need to rebuild it. Um, okay, now when you, turn it, when you turn one of these games on, it goes through a self-test. And this self-test is going to check all the RAM, it's going to check everything, okay? And if it fails, you're going to end up seeing a screen of garbage, um, as well as you're going to hear tones, because it's telling you what's wrong. And that's what we're listening to right now. That's what we're hearing. And we have to count those. Come on. It's 10 tones, okay? Then it repeats. That's basically telling me that one of the RAM chips is bad. On the main board here. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to take this we're going to take this board out. We're going to take it uh, we're going to take it in where I have better light, and I'm going to look for cold solder joints. I'm going to look for anything wrong on this board, and um, I might have to replace that that particular IC, um, the RAM. Now, according to the operation manual or the user manual, and you can usually download these if you don't have the original. Okay. When it says that there's a failed RAM, it's going to give you tones, okay, and you count them. Ours was 10, so it's saying that the RAM location is K4, okay. Now, the, the problem is, is it's going to end up, this might not be the only RAM. This is just the first RAM that fails, okay. So there might be other RAMs that are bad, okay. Now, what I've done is I went ahead and I ordered this particular RAM IC, um, and I ordered 10 of them. There's, there's only um, eight, as far as I know, um, but I ordered ten of them just in case there's more that we find that are, that are bad, okay? Now, I'm not going to get those until next week. So, as far as me being able to get this thing started today, it's probably not going to happen. But if you look at, if you look at the, um, and it's really hard to see, okay? But here on this, this, uh, this trace that's cruising down, this big trace, um, th there's letters. And like this one says 4F. This is says 4H, 4J, and you just kind of keep cruising. 4K is right here, okay? And they have these things um, basically labeled where it's like, you know, here's 4B, here's 4D, E, F, G, H, you know, all the way down. And um, so this is, this is the row 4, because if we go 1, 2, 3, 4, and then they end up having it 
with the letter, right? So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Sometimes there's not an A, sometimes there's not a Q. It just, it just depends on who's doing it. Um, but we can see here that this is a B. There's no C, because I'm not seeing a C here. Okay. Um, D, E, F. Then it goes to H, J, K, L, M, N. Since this is the RAM that is giving us potential problems, right now I'm looking at this to see if there's any breaks in the traces. I'm not seeing anything right there. Okay. Sometimes a break happens under it. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this, flip it over, and this is where that particular IC is, which is right here. And if we have a cold solder joint on that, which basically means that at one time it was soldered, but it kind of cracked and it fell away. If we have a cold solder joint on this, it'll make it where... Um, this will not work the way that it's supposed to. And a magnifying glass and a light comes in really handy. Now, how do we know? I'm not, okay, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing anything like a cold solder joint. But how do we know that it's the IC and it's not something else a little bit further on? Maybe something that's controlling the RAM. How do we know? Well, we're gonna do a simple test. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out that particular IC and I'm going to take out the IC that's right next to it and I'm going to reverse these and when I put it back in we should end up hearing this one fail not this one okay but if this one says that it's failing it either means both of these are bad or there's something else that's going on other than the RAM Okay, this one is the bad chip, supposedly, okay? And then this one right here is supposed to be the good chip. So what I'm going to do is, uh, feels like there's part of it still kind of being held in here. So, so let's take what we've, we suspect to be a good IC and uh, put it in to where we were originally getting our um, bad uh, ROM tones, okay? And before I put this in though, I want to look at all of these traces. I want to see if anything is broken. Um, sometimes you need a magnifying glass. Sometimes it's, it's better to actually end up just using a multimeter to make sure. But I'm looking at this and they're just jumping out at me. So I think I think we're okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place this back in where it belongs. Now I want to make sure that I can see solder go all the way around this. This is 4L and 4L should only give us 8 tones this time. So we should only hear 8 tones when I put this back in. So let's, I'm going to turn it on, so let's listen. So this, this RAM right here is bad. And it also tells us that the other RAM is good because we're not getting the 10, now we're getting the 8. And that's a good sign. That's good stuff. Okay. So this one's bad, not a big deal. I ordered some and they are on their way. But we can fix this monitor still and get it where the um, vertical collapse is gone. And uh, from there we'll be able to um, when we put the new RAM in, we'll be able to see what the next step is. But right now we got to get that monitor fixed. 
Okay, we're going to discharge this. Now this thing is dangerous. There's a lot of juice still stored up inside this guy. And even though this is not the most ideal way of doing it, it is a fairly safe way. Grab a screwdriver, make sure that it's got an insulated handle that you are not touching any metal connected to this at all, okay? End up taking some alligator clips, clip it to the frame because we want to we want to ground. From here we're going to end up taking the other and we're going to uh, attach it to the screwdriver. So now this screwdriver is ground. And what we're going to do is we're going to we got to be careful that this does not slip off. Okay? That's real important that this does not slip off. But now what we're going to do is we're going to go up and underneath this cup and we're going to hear a pop and we might see a spark, okay? Do not touch any metal during the time that you are doing this. Okay? Try to touch that anode. And now what we're going to do is we're going to give this about five or ten minutes and then we're going to hit it again. And then that way we know for sure this has been completely discharged. Okay? And I can't stress this enough. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. You know? There's plenty of um, videos on YouTube and stuff that teaches you the basics behind a lot of this stuff. I think I even have some up there. Um, but you, you, electricity is something you don't want to mess with unless you understand it right don't just assume that you're not going to get shocked or whatever make sure that you know exactly where certain things are stored and let's just give this a minute or two and then we're going to go ahead and do it again and then from there we can take this apart and we can start looking for cold solder joints we're going to look at this everything is visual inspection first and then after visual inspection um, that's when you have to start going through and testing things but I want to know what this goes to I suspect that this is a ground Okay, but I don't know why it's been cut like this. That bothers me because I don't know why it's been cut. But we have some screws holding some of these boards on. Um, this board is not on very good at all. Okay, this is really dusty. So I'm going to take my air compressor and I'm going to blow all the dust off of this. Okay, so now at this point, I need to go through and I need to see if I can see any cold solder joints. And as mentioned before, a cold solder joint is just where something has been soldered and then later on down the line, it ends up kind of breaking free and we have to repair that, okay? Now, with the vertical collapse, a lot of times that's an IC, sometimes it's a capacitor that does it, but what we need to do is we need to find the IC that controls the vertical uh, collapse. Uh, it, can, it controls that and then we're going to look at those um, solder joints first to see if that's what's causing it if those somehow have broken free um, and sometimes it's hard to see and so you'll need a magnifying glass and you'll need a uh, a light to, to see uh, any breaks in the uh, solder and uh, I'm just going to cruise through I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm looking at places a lot like ICs, like these areas. Anywhere that I see like ICs, those are the ones that, you know, I don't really even need to know what's going on in the front because I can tell just by the way that everything's soldered in through the rear what I'm looking at, you know. And it's also marked. But I'm just going to go through and I'm going to look at all of these to see if I see anything that's really standing out saying, hey, this is... This is bad. You need to you need to resolder this, like reseed it. Well, look at what I found here, dude. Poof. Okay. So um, I'm pretty sure this is bad. I'm pretty sure this is bad. I'm gonna test it though, but I'm pretty sure this is bad. This is something. This is something that's um, can do a lot of fucking uh, hectic shit on your um, board here. There's some capacitors that I've been taking out and replacing but there's some that I don't have so what I've done is I've gone at, I, and I'm just replacing all of them but what I've done is on the rear of it I've written down exactly what it was this way after I go buy these and I come back um, I know where they go and uh, I'll just do all my soldering at the same time now so far I haven't really seen any cold solder joints okay um, but I'm going to keep looking 
and I'm just doing one thing at a time here, but um, the capacitors, that's, that's a big one um, on a lot of these old monitors is doing the capacitors. And um, like right up here, I've got a capacitor. Oh, okay. But I'm gonna go pick up these capacitors. Um, today, um, they're open. The place that I'm gonna go is open. Um, but they won't be tomorrow. And uh, I'm gonna go get what I need. And I'm gonna take the capacitors with me. I can, um, the rule of thumb is basically this. The amount of farads needs to be the same, but the voltage can always be higher, okay? Can't be lower, but it can be higher. So, like, if you can't find a 33 by 160, you can replace it with a 33 by 200 or 220 or whatever, okay? And um, that's what I'm going to do is I have to, go get, I have to go get these, and I've taken them with me. Um, and when I get back, I'm going to replace them. I give this thing a really good more once-over just to make sure that nothing else is really standing out looking bad and from there I'm going to try putting this guy back together and seeing if we can get a picture out of it. Okay so there's no beeping and this this guy is kind of looks like it's doing what it's supposed to be doing even though we end up having the vertical collapse. I can still see movement which means that there is some stuff that's going on and I'm not hearing the beeps. Okay so I think the memory part is done this looks like it's it's going through uh, different types of modes, uh, like a, a like the attraction modes, and then this will probably end up going back to what it was just doing here in just a minute. If we timed it, it would tell us for sure. But now we got to start working on this uh, vertical collapse. Okay, so we have to look at the the amplifier, and there's there's typically an IC or something that controls that or a transistor, and that's what we're going to look at next. Now, if we look at the schematics here, right here, we can see where it says the V drive out. So the vertical drive out, and this is the amp. So this, this IC could be bad right here, okay? And I've ordered one, um, but it hasn't arrived yet. But we've got, we've got things that are coming out this direction, and then it comes to the, the V out, and we've got two transistors here, okay? Q452, Q451, which is right here. Okay, now if we look on the if we look on the circuit board, right here is Q451, Q452, and I've desoldered both of these, and now I'm going to have to test to see if those guys are good or not. Now, so I'm going to take them out of the board and test them. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what I replaced on this. Okay, um, there were some cold solder joints on a couple of resistors right over in this area, and there um, also over back here on a, one of the, the power um, resistors there was a cold solder joint as well. Now right here, I don't know if you can see it, right there, I replaced that IC. It probably didn't really need to be replaced but I did it anyway because when I touched up the solder joints to it, it changed the way that everything was working and not for the better and um, it's basically my vision is bad an EN1235 I'm sorry an EN11235 and this is one of the drivers for it I mean so this is you know the horizontal vertical drive and everything like that beginning of the amp stuff these two uh, power transistors um, these are for the output um, I shouldn't say power transistors, but these two are the output transistors for the vertical drive, okay? Those two were replaced, and I replaced a bunch of capacitors in here, a bunch of electrolytics. Oh, one more thing. Down here, okay, right here, there's a service switch, okay? Um, I don't know if you can see this. Hang on for a second. There is a service switch. Okay, right there. And that service switch was thrown. And when that service switch is thrown, um, I'm not completely sure what the uh, service switch is, is for, honestly. But when it's thrown, it gives you vertical collapse. So this actually um, was giving me vertical collapse because that switch was thrown. Um, but um, everything's good to go now. Um, so let's go ahead and put this back in and then give it a test. Do the moment of truth here. Let me turn it on and let's see if we're good. Let me turn this light off. No reason for that to be blaring. We got power. Let's see what happens. 
we have Bush. Okay, so I have it set up for free play and everything works on it now. The only thing is the trackball. Um, I had to order some bearings for it. I thought the bearings that were originally in it were going to be okay, but um, they've got rust in them. So it's kind of grabbing and it's not really wanting to move around the way that it should. So when I go downward, I have to push down on the uh, trackball more than I should in order to get it to respond and that's no good. So I ordered some bearings. When you order bearings, don't, don't uh, spend like 30 bucks or whatever on a set of uh, trackball bearings you know that say specifically for trackballs or whatever, don't even do that. You want to get some that are called uh, R4ZZ. It's the same size. And you'll be able to get these things. Um, I got a package of 10 for $12. Okay, And that's what you want to do. But I have this set up for free play. You can pick how, what score you want to start. We'll start with zero. And you'll see that everything on this works. But the trackball has a uh, kind of bad response. See, like right now I wanted to go down and I, and I couldn't really uh, uh, go down the way that I wanted to go down. But other than that, um, this guy is uh, working. I just got to get this this trackball to respond better, and after I end up getting uh, um, after I end up getting the new um, bearings, th this this will respond a lot better. Um, I haven't played this in such a long time, but uh, for the most part, everything's here. The bezel was missing. Um, which on a lot of the older games that's kind of normal they deteriorate because it's just cardboard but i can't see anything back there so i'm fine with it with it not having a bezel um it cost me about twenty dollars or less in parts um to fix this um not counting the trackball okay the trackball was is uh rep getting this fixed is actually the most expensive part of it um because all of the other components that I had to replace were only like a dollar, two dollars, and stuff like that. Trackball is, is the thing that's going to be the most expensive. And after everything is said and done, I'll probably have spent about uh, thirty-five dollars on uh, rebuilding the trackball. But anyway, we got a working game. And uh, until next time, guys, I'll talk to you later.